In the last video, we talked about dimensionality reduction for the purpose of compressing the data. In this video, I'd like to tell you about a second application of dimensionality reduction, and that is to visualize the data. For a lot of machine learning applications, it really helps us to develop effective learning algorithms if we can understand our data better, if we have some way of visualizing the data better. And so dimensionality reduction offers us often another useful tool to do so. Let's start with an example. Let's say we've collected a large data set of many statistics and facts about different countries around the world. So maybe the first feature X1, this is uh, the country's GDP or the gross domestic product. Uh, X2 is a per capita, meaning the per person GDP. X3, human development index, life expectancy, X5, X6, and so on. And we may have a huge data set like this with you know, maybe um, 50 features for every country, and we may have a huge set of countries. So is there something that we can do to try to understand our data better? So I've given this huge table of numbers. You know, can we, can we, how do you visualize this data? If you have 50 features, it's very difficult to plot 50 dimensional data. So uh, what is a good way to um, examine this data? Using dimensionality reduction, what we can do is instead of having each country represented by this feature vector xi which is 50 dimensional so instead of say having a country like you know canada instead of having 50 numbers to represent can the features of canada let's say we can come up with a different feature representation that is these z vectors that is in r2 if that's the case, if we can have just a pair of numbers, z1 and z2, that somehow summarizes my 50 numbers, maybe what we can do is then plot these countries in R2 and use that to try to understand uh, the space and the, the, these sorts of features of uh, different countries a little bit better. And so here, what we're going to, what you can do is reduce the data from 50D, from 50 dimensions, to 2D, so we can plot this as a two-dimensional plot. And when you do that, it turns out that if you look at the output of the dimensionality reduction algorithm, it usually doesn't ascribe a particular meaning to these um, new features Z1 and Z2. And it's often up to us to figure out you know, roughly what these features mean. But if you plot what these features, here's what you might find. So here, every country is represented by a point ZI, which is an R2. And so each of those dots in this figure represents a country. And so here's Z1 and here's Z2. And uh, highlight a couple of these. So um, we might find, for example, that the horizontal axis, the Z1 axis, corresponds roughly you know, to the overall country size or the overall um, economic activity of a country. So the overall GDP, overall um, economic uh, uh, size of a country. Whereas the vertical axis in our data might correspond to the uh, per person, you know, GDP or the per person well-being or the per person economic activity, um, and you might find that given these fifty features, you know, these are really the two main dimensions of variation. And so, um, out here, you might have a country like the. USA, which has a which is a relatively large GDP, is that you know, it's a very large GDP and a relatively high per person GDP as well. Whereas here you might have a country like um, Singapore, which you know actually has a very high per person GDP as well, but because Singapore is a much smaller country, uh, the overall you know economy size of Singapore um, is is much smaller than the US. And over here, you know, you would have countries. Um, where individuals are sort of unfortunately somewhat less well off, maybe shorter mm -hmm. life expectancy, uh, less healthcare, less good, less economic activity, as well as smaller countries. Whereas um, a point like this would correspond to a country that uh, has a fair, has a substantial amount of economic activity, but where individuals, you know, tend to be somewhat less well off. But so you might find that the, the axes Z1 and Z2 can help you to more succinctly capture really what are the two main dimensions of variations amongst different countries, um, such as the overall economic activity of a country reflected by the size of the country's overall economy, as well as the um, it, per person individual well-being measured by you know per person GDP per person healthcare and things like that.
So that's how you can use dimensionality reduction in order to reduce data from 50 dimensions or whatever down to two dimensions or maybe down to three dimensions so that you can plot it and understand your data better. In the next video, we'll start to develop a specific algorithm called PCA, or Principal Components Analysis, which will allow us to do this and also do the earlier application I talked about of compressing the data.